Mexican policymakers hoped that the passage of NAFTA would spur foreign direct investment in the country. In this video, we discuss FDI in Mexico, whether NAFTA significantly increased inflows, and what kind of effect the investment has had on the economy. Let's start with a brief overview. In the 12 years after NAFTA was signed, Mexico received about $170 billion worth of foreign direct investment. Most of the FDI went into manufacturing and services, as you can see in this figure. Of the manufacturing sector, about 30% consistently went to maquiladora operations. This is interesting because the special tax advantages that maquiladoras had before NAFTA should be increasingly eroded as tariffs fall between the two countries. For that reason, we might have expected investment in maquiladoras to have decreased after NAFTA's passage. It does show, however, that multinational corporations that invest in Mexican manufacturing are not all just interested in assembly line construction of final goods to later be exported to rich countries. About 50% of this FDI has gone into sectors such as metals, electrical equipment, automobile manufacturing, food processing, and chemicals. Foreigners are also investing heavily in services. 20% of that money goes towards retail and wholesale trade, while then more than 40% has been invested in banking and insurance. To date, there's been very little foreign investment in either agriculture or mining. Almost all of Mexico's FDI comes from developed countries. Not surprisingly, given its economic size, trade ties, and geographic proximity, the majority of Mexican FDI has come from the U.S. From 1994 to 2005, over 60% of FDI flows came from here, while more than 95% came from other OECD countries. The EU, mostly the U.K., Germany, Spain, and France, made up about 25% of inflows. While the U.S. makes up the largest contributor to FDI, multinationals from different countries often dominate certain sectors. For instance, Canadian companies have invested significant amounts in publishing, in clay, glass, and cement. The U.K. has put a lot of money into food and tobacco, Spain into communications, banking, and insurance, and Japan into automobile manufacturing. Free trade agreements could theoretically have positive or negative effects on FDI flows. To explain this, let's first start by distinguishing between vertical and horizontal FDI. Vertical FDI is where a multinational company has different stages of production in different countries in order to try to take advantage of local conditions. This would be true of maquiladoras or most outsourcing, where the corporate headquarters are in the home country, but the manufacturing is done in low-wage countries. Vertical FDI is usually done when two countries have very different factor endowments and hence different comparative advantages. It also makes the most amount of sense when there's relatively free trade between the two countries. Horizontal FDI describes a situation where a multinational corporation manufactures goods in various countries for those domestic markets. This is most frequent when there are serious obstacles to free trade that make it preferable to produce in the foreign country rather than face the tariffs by exporting there. In the case of horizontal FDI, it doesn't matter if the two countries have different capital to labor ratios, just that there be trade barriers that make it profitable to establish various manufacturing locations. So obviously when a free trade agreement is signed, there is less reason to engage in a horizontal FDI. For that reason, we might see a reduction in that type of FDI after liberalization. On the other hand, there should be a large jump in vertical FDI, which relies on there being relatively free trade. So a free trade agreement might also lead to tariff jumping by third party countries. For example, if Japan faces high tariffs to export cars to the U.S., they might establish factories in Mexico after NAFTA was signed. That way they can export from Mexico to the U.S. with little to no tariffs. In theory, NAFTA should have had a strong positive effect on FDI inflows into Mexico. The countries have very different capital labor endowments, so it's natural to think that the U.S. multinational corporations would base their operations in Mexico to take advantage of cheap labor costs. Trade liberalization between the two countries would only increase the benefit of moving operations there. NAFTA's passage would also reassure nervous investors about putting many money into Mexico. If Mexican exports to the U.S. started to dramatically increase, the U.S. wouldn't be able to resort to protectionist measures. In addition, NAFTA had several provisions that would specifically reassure investors. First, the agreement had a most favored nation clause. It stated that investors from North America would receive at least as good a treatment as investors from outside the region. There was also the national treatment principle, which prohibited discrimination among investors from the three countries and the opening up of capital markets where investors could freely buy and sell foreign exchange across countries. So all in all, it was expected that any decrease in horizontal FDI would be swamped by large increases in vertical FDI after NAFTA's passage. In a 2005 paper, Cuevas et al. find that NAFTA increased FDI into Mexico by about 
While this is a large increase, it was actually less than their model predicted for the country. Let's speculate that issues outside of their empirical model, such as the tequila crisis in 1994-95, may have affected inflows. Several papers study the effect of the increased FDI on the Mexican economy, and they found mixed results. In a 2010 paper, Andreas Waldkirch uses census data for industrial firms to examine the issue. He finds that FDI has positively affected total factor productivity in Mexico, especially U.S. investment in manufacturing that is not of the maquiladora variety. But he also finds little evidence that this increased FDI has raised average wages, even after controlling for a host of other possible factors. These results support earlier ones found by Jose Gabriel Palma, who studied the dynamics of the maquiladoras and non-maquiladora sectors in Mexico. Palma showed that most of the maquiladora sector boom can be explained by the hiring of more workers, not by increased wages or higher productivity growth in this sector. Waldkirch argues that his findings are evidence that FDI has mostly benefited employers rather than workers, perhaps surprising fi finding given how labor-abundant Mexico is. As a caveat, though, he doesn't find that FDI in the maquiladora sector may decrease overall income inequality as it raises the relative wages of unskilled laborers. Research has shown that FDI has positively affected both blue- and white-collar employment in manufacturing in Mexico, although the quantitative effect is not large. The positive effect of FDI on blue-collar employment is reduced in more highly skilled industries. As for manufacturing in general, employment has gone up much more quickly in the maquiladora sector by 6.5% than it has in the non-maquiladora sector, where it's actually fallen by 1%. In some sense, it's not surprising that employment hasn't changed a lot because the FDI has taken place in sectors that represent small percentages of overall formal employment. For instance, about 75% of FDI from 1994 to 2004 went to manufacturing and financial services. These two sectors combined only make up 13.7% of formal employment in Mexico. The distinction is even starker when we focus only on financial services. This sector received about 25% of FDI, but it makes up only 2% of formal employment. And the reason for this discrepancy is probably because a lot of the investment here went for mergers and acquisitions rather than brand new investment. And as I mentioned earlier, the sectors that are especially labor-intensive, such as agriculture, receive very little foreign investment. In short, it does seem like NAFTA brought about a large increase in FDI flows to Mexico, but the surge was not as large as some predicted and did not seem to have a big quantitative effect on either wages or employment. The material from this video come from four papers. First is Andreas Waldkirch's 2010, The Effects of Foreign Direct Investment in Mexico Since NAFTA, Jose Gabriel Palma's 2005, the seven main stylized facts of the Mexican economy since trade liberalization and NAFTA. There's also a good 2005 paper by Cuevas et al. called FDI in Mexico since the approval of NAFTA, and a 2007 working paper by Nunenkamp et al. called FDI in Mexico an Empirical Assessment of Employment Effects.